Welcome to Spark Tank. Spark Tank is a student incubator for new businesses, nonprofits, and ideas designed to improve our community and school. Today in the tank, we have three groups of entrepreneurs looking for advice, mentorship, and money to bring their creative partnerships into the marketplace. Let's meet the judges. Fernando Castellanos, the Chief Revenue Officer of Sheer ID. He also serves on the board of Bright Futures and All Stars New York. Jessica Caparasso leads marketing for Victoria's Secret Swimwear and is a partner in her family-owned Wagyu cattle and olive oil business in Florida. Paul Dean is a partner at Ernst & Young, where he leads the banking and capital markets business transformation practice. Nuno Tella is the president of Diageo Beer Company USA. He was the 2014 Cannes Creative Marketer of the Year and was also named Adweek's Top 50 Most Influential Marketers. First into the tank, we have Maggie, a senior hoping to pass stages four and five, with some big updates to her What the F4 lifestyle blog. Some of my long-term goals for the blog is to increase the Instagram followers, increase my blog audience, and eventually become an influencer on the web, and hopefully monetize the blog through collaborations and ads. We started by changing the blog to WordPress, which allowed us to add Google ad space. Google pays me to put their ads on my posts. We also created um, an Amazon affiliate account, which is done through me selecting certain products I want to promote. And then if someone goes on and purchases it, I get a fee. We have specific demographics that we use to target the promotion. And we've reached over half a million impressions. Most of the viewers and the users are women ages 13 to 17. So current and future steps. Um, just this week, I was actually signed as an influencer for OMG Brands which is one of the fastest growing teen brands in the U.S. Also um, collaborating with um, model Lyndon Orr, who's going to do a guest post, as well as Camilla and Matthew McConaughey, who are going to do an interview video on my blog. This is the market of the future. So it's really, uh, you are tapping into uh, something completely disruptive. And that's cool because you have learned a lot. Everyone's talking about blogs and everyone's talking about platforms and all that. But in the new world, it's all about data analytics. You're building a repository of structured and unstructured data that you can drive insights from. As you start maturing your um, technology, one of the things you may want to think about is how do I monetize that data? How do I go from identifying consumer signals and insights to being able to activate that on behalf of a brand, a company, etc.? And how do I price the value for it? With that, I think it's brilliant. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> we almost um, only work with Instagram and uh, influencers now for our marketing at Henry Bendel because we saw that customers just really responded to it in a, in a much stronger way. And you have such a clear and differentiated point of view on your blog. It, it really looks, you know, frankly, as professional as, as the people that, that we work with today. So huge congratulations. It's really polished. Next up, we have Charlotte a junior and new addition to the Dwight class of 2020, stepping into the tank for the first time. She'll be presenting us on her sustainable and organic coffee-infused shampoo she has developed while previously living in Germany. Recove means recycled coffee. Two main values I want to bring out are quality and recycling and sustainability. I started this product in Germany and uh, some universities actually, and I have proven of a pharmacy that where it's written down that the impact works and it does work if you do it in the right way. The caffeine contained in the coffee grounds have an impact against cellulitis and hair loss. The caffeine has its highest impact if it's processed in the proper way. And for that, I would have to dry the coffee ground at the right temperature for the right time. The next step would be my marketing and I would go through social media and influence it because I think that's the best way to promote my product. Then the last step in my value added chain is the sale and I decided to do only an online store at the beginning. And for that I would get help for, from e-commercial logistics for shipping my product to my customer. The only brand that I could find that actually has a coffee and shampoo is Alpidzine. They used to do it for like over 10 years now, but their reviews have gone really bad and people tend to not buy it anymore. Have you washed your hair with it? Um, I only did one prototype, but and I started to use it and it 
I mean, it showed a nice effect, but as I don't suffer from hair loss, I couldn't really tell. But with the knowledge gained from the first one, this one might actually be really good. It's impressive. That's all I can say. Did you get help from anybody on that? I basically didn't receive a lot of help. Um, and because I didn't get any help, I was in a big process of research. And that's why I would say, like, in the end, it helped me a lot because if I would have get, like, gotten help, I probably wouldn't know how to do the business on my own. I would love to be uh, even more involved. And, uh, you know, really, I love the project. I don't know if we can invest together with, uh, you know, like, I don't know if Chancellor Span allows us to invest our own money. Finally, Stefan joins us in the tank for a progress update on his fourth and final iteration of his affordable printed prosthetic, the Hephaestus Hand. He is hoping to secure passage into the fifth and final launch stage. In terms of progress, I have received testing from a man named Robert. He is an Iraqi veteran who lost his arm in an accident in Iraq. Uh, I have six other amputees waiting to test the newest version of the hand as well. I got feedback from Robert. He said he loved the hand, in fact, so much so that he hasn't given it back yet. Um, so he liked that it had the fundamental functionalities of a real human hand, and it was lightweight and easy to use. We plan to be structured as a for-profit business to business, selling mostly to prosthetic hand distribution companies and NGOs in third world countries. The price point of our product is $150, while the next closest competitor, Open Bionics, sells their hand for $6,000. As for the hand itself, uh, as well as building up the business behind the hand, I also created a version 4. The version 4 is half the cost of version 3, costing only $150. Version 4 is also more customizable, with every single piece being able to be customized. And finally, I received a patent for the finger design of version 4. It's good to see you took the feedback. Um, now you can actually get people who say it works, they're happy with it, it has functionality. Uh, reducing the cost from, it was like three something yeah, last uh, time? Yeah, it was $300. So down to 150 you know, you're going the right direction. It also weighs like one third of last one. Yeah. So you said you got really positive feedback from the person who's testing it right now. Was there any feedback that he offered that could help you further perfect it? In the previous version, we had a rotating wrist, and he said that this wasn't necessarily a requirement for a prosthetic hand, and that in many situations it wouldn't exactly be useful. Tell me a bit about the patent. Has that been lodged and has that been approved, or is it pending approval? Well, I found a lawyer who was willing to do it pro bono, so I filed a provisional patent on specifically the finger design for that hand. You are uh, stage four, asking uh, to go to stage five, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Um, so do you have this list of next steps for the project and the funding? So I assume that you want to make sure that those, that improved prototype, you know, those six are tested and you learn. But then, you know, beyond that, uh, what do you really want to do? That, that was unclear to me. Okay, so after we get uh, the hand tested by the six amputees, ideally that would be the final product. And um, once we finish that, we can make deals with uh, prosthetic hand distribution companies and NGOs to begin distribution. So as I said, we're already in talks with the NGO in Tunisia, so ideally we just go straight to them and hopefully begin distributing the hand.